The time has come for the Psychic Cup meta simplified. The Psychic Cup is a Great League limited type format, limited to only Psychic type Pokemon with Mew Band, because Mew is just too good with that Shadow Claw, that runs alongside the Open Great League here in Season 12 GBL from September 8th to September 15th. Now, unlike other limited formats, I think Psychic Cup is going to be kind of interesting. With the Flying Cup, you had like Aerodactyl just kind of storming on everything. And then in the Fighting Type Cup, you had the hot mess that is the fighting type cup. I think the psychic cup is going to be kind of interesting because psychic resists psychic, right? So you have to get kind of creative with how you're hurting everybody. And I think that the psychic cup kind of brings a lot of interesting stuff out of the woodwork when it comes to psychic type Pokemon. Of course, this video is just going to cover everything you need to know about the Psychic Cup just kind of lightly. If you want more information about the select picks for the Psychic Cup meta, link in the description to my article, The Psychic Cup Meta Simplified on GamePress. And then when it comes to this infographic here, I wish I made it. I wish I had these art skills, but Ravenate from the GamePress crew put this together for us. So thank you so much, Raven, for making such a great infographic. And without further ado, let me tell you what you need to know about the Psychic Cup. So, thing number one to know about the Psychic Cup is Malamar. Malamar is a Dark-type Pokemon. It's got Foul Play. It's got Psycho Cut to reach that Foul Play very quickly. And because of that, Malamar beats basically everything that's not a Fairy-type in the Psychic Cup, more or less, one way or another. Now, one thing that kind of holds Malamar back a little bit, like, you're still going to see Malamar all over the place, but, like, the, the kind of cracks in the armor for Malamar here is going to be the Psycho Cut. While it does reach those charge moves pretty quickly, everything in the cup is going to resist it, which means your ability to fast move farm down stuff with that attack, or just close on opponents with that extra damage from the Psycho Cut, it's going to be a lot less than for other Pokemon that are dealing neutral or super effective fast move damage. So that's where Malamar starts to fall short. But make no mistake, Malamar is probably the most dominant Pokemon in this cup, and you're going to see it everywhere. For the secondary charge move, Hyper Beam. Why? Because what are you going to superpower in this cup? But as far as Hyper Beam goes, you could potentially Hyper Beam a Gardevoir for 100% damage, which is probably the only way you can possibly beat Gardevoir with a Malamar. Then the second big thing you got to know for the Psychic Cup is going to be Victini. I hope you didn't power up your Victini yet past 1500 CP because Victini is just kind of crazy good now with the Quick Attack update in the Open Great League, and it's going to be even crazier in the Psychic Cup. Uh, basically, Quick Attack is good now. Pokemon that have it enjoy having it, and Victini is reaching those V creates faster than it ever has before. And in the Psychic Cup, it basically goes unresisted. In fact, a lot of the better picks it does super effective damage against, so Victini is going to be living it up here. Big problem with Victini is that it is already kind of on the fragile side to begin with, and every time it uses V create, it drops its defense stat by three whole stages, which puts it in a position where like even Gardevoir can fast move farm it down because it's taking so much extra damage from anything because of the defense drop. So it will be a little bit more of a technical Pokemon to make great use out of. And then if you are kind of feeling sad, you are the player that powered up their Victini, and my heart goes out to you. I only have one Mew, and I powered up my Mew past 1500 CP for like raids way back in the day, because how was I supposed to know that there's going to be a 1500 CP cap in the PvP that didn't exist at the time, right? So, you know, I hope Pokemon Go does something in the future to make like all Pokemon more accessible, especially, you know, when it comes to these one-time Pokemon, if you power them up past the League CP you know, give us a way to actually be able to use them still. It definitely does suck. Um, but I think in the Psychic Cup, Malamar is so strong, and the other main picks in this meta are so strong as well, that as long as you got Malamar, you don't have to feel too bad about it. But if you don't have Malamar or Victini, then I, you're trying to prove something to the world in this meta here, because these guys are so freaking good in the Psychic Cup. So just keep that in mind. Uh, for Victini's secondary charge move, I like Overheat in this meta because it doesn't debuff your defense stat and it does hit even harder. And if you're going to KO something or if you're going to swap out anyways, uh, then why not? Uh, so I think it could be better for closing. Psychic is still a really good option too, though, just so you can like, you know, knock things down, KO them without dropping your defense. That could be a big brain tactic in some situations. Then we got the Steel type Pokemon. We got Bronzong. Bronzong is not a Dark type Pokemon, but it does have Dark type attacks with Faint Attack and Payback, allowing it to just wall and spam down a lot of different stuff in this meta. 
Problem that Bronzong does run into though is that Faint Attack, even though it could be hitting for neutral or super effective damage on basically everything in the cup, it's not that very good of an attack. So it can get kind of awkward for Bronzong. And then Bronzong also has a uh, Psy Shock as a bait move, but it doesn't do a whole lot of damage. Against most opponents, it's probably going to do less than like 10% damage to them. So things can get kind of weird for Bronzong. To add to that, Faint Attack is neutral into Fairy types, and even though I would say Bronzong has an advantageous matchup against Gardevoir, uh, in the two-shield situation, Gardevoir can still like beat this thing down just because Faint Attack's just doing so little damage, even though the charms are resisted. The charm damage is just so strong that it's able to erode this poor bell here. So there are some risks with the Bronzong, but I do feel like it is a quite good pick for this meta. Then we got Metagross. Metagross is pretty interesting. It's got Bullet Punch, which is, you know, decent neutral fast move spammage in this cup. And it's got uh, Meteor Mash, which just hurts everything in this cup. So it's just a good all around neutral, neutral, hurting you, hurting you kind of Pokemon. Uh, big thing with Metagross, though, in this cup is that it is able to manage Malamar pretty good. You know, Malamar with the Psycho Cuts that are doubly resisted, right, has trouble closing on Metagross sometimes, but Metagross don't care. It'll Meteor Mash you and beat you down with the Bullet Punches. So this kind of illustrates the issue that Malamar can run into against opponents and how Metagross kind of takes advantage of that kind of situation. To add to that, against the Fairy-type Pokemon, both Gardevoir and uh, Galarian... Rapidash have the opportunity to overcome the Bronzong given the right set of circumstances against the uh the Metagross here Metagross can just you know pummel them down with the super effective bullet punches these are very fragile Pokemon they do not appreciate that kind of aggression so yeah Metagross is a pretty solid answer to them but you know it's a pretty solid answer to both these guys and Victini on top of it Claydol Claydol is a ground type Pokemon Claydol also has Mud Slap so it can just kind of mud slap these guys into Timbuktu uh, pretty easily. For the secondary charge move, you know, the move that's alongside the Shadow Ball, I think Rock Tomb is the move to go with in this cup. It does cost more energy than Shadow Ball, which sounds really bad. And it has like pretty poor coverage compared to other options it could be running. Uh, but when you're mud slapping things down and you get them to that point where they could shield your attack and then try to throw a charge move at you to deal damage, right? If you throw the Rock Tomb, if they don't shield it, it'll just KO them, the same as Shadow Ball, right? Because they're so low HP. But if they do shield it, and then they throw a charge move at you, now that charge move is going to do less damage because you debuff their attack stat. So a little, you know, big brain tech plays with the clay doll going on. I think it'll be a really interesting Pokemon, and I think it definitely will put the Victini in its place, more so than anything else in this meta. That said, all the fire type attacks coming from Victini, Neutral damage, so uh, look alive, Claydol. And then finally, we got the Fairy-type Pokemon. I think Gardevoir and Charm need no introduction, but I will say that Shadow Gardevoir is going to be the preference here because I noticed from the simulations, at least, like, normal Gardevoir was getting KO'd still in, like, the same kind of situations as the Shadow version, but the Shadow version is doing more damage. So it's like... There's no benefit that I can tell right now for going with the non-shadow. And then with the shadow, you got the benefit of more damage. So I'm not a charm expert here, but I'm just saying that Shadow Gardevoir might be the way to go in this cup. And then you have uh, Galarian Rapidash. Galarian Rapidash, like, I think is kind of a diamond in the rough. It's not as obviously explosive as everything else in the central meta here. Um, but it does got Fairy Wind for, you know, rapid energy gains. It does have that Body Slam for the body spammage. And then it also has the big Mega Horn for closing on stuff. So I think early meta, I think a lot of people are going to underrate this Pokemon, underestimate the kind of damage it can dish out. Uh, but I think we're going to find out pretty quickly that this thing is a force to be reckoned with. And if it can get a little bit of an energy lead going on things, or maybe like a shield advantage, obviously everything does better with a shield advantage. Um, but if this thing gets a bit of an energy lead, and you know, the baits play in its favor, you know, people aren't calling the mega horns, people are shielding the body slams, I think this thing could end up being one of the better, if not the best pick in the whole cup. That said, it is a very fragile Pokemon. It is a little bit bait dependent. And if it falls behind, you know, on the energy race there, then it's going to stay behind. So it definitely has a lot of issues. So it's kind of hard to say. Like early meta, maybe use it cautiously. 
Uh, but once you get comfortable with things and you start to see like how you could really use Glaring Rapidash to your advantage, I think it could be like one of the best picks in this cup. Then moving on to the core breakers or like off meta picks, you got the slow bros. Slow bros got water gun. Water gun does super effective damage against send things and it does neutral damage against basically everything. And that's the main appeal to them. They've got virtually no charge move pressure though. Ice beam is pretty mediocre in this format and then water pulse is basically always bad. So the main thing with them is mostly gonna be the fast move spamming. I think Victini is gonna be popular enough and because Victini is popular enough, Claydol might be popular enough where these guys can really shine. So just keep them in the back of your mind there. Then you got Alolan Raichu. Alolan Raichu's got a similar situation as Galarian Rapidash where it's charge move spammy and quite fragile. I think the thing that holds it back is that the uh, wild charge isn't quite as good of a nuke as Megahorn is. And it doesn't really have any like resistances to make use of with the electric type. And then to add to that, I think Claydol is going to be pretty popular, which just completely shuts the poor mouse down. Uh, but outside of that, I think it could be a really powerful pick and could be like a diamond in the rough sleeper kind of pick like uh, Galarian Rapidash, maybe. Then we got Metacham. Metacham is definitely bad, not good in this cup, but I wouldn't underestimate it, you know? And if you got some big brain plays going on with Metacham, like if you see how Metacham can really work for your team, I think you really could make it work in this meta because this Pokemon probably will be underestimated. A uh, big thing to know about it is that the Dynamic Punch can take on the Steel-type Pokemon and Malamar quite well, which leaves your main vulnerabilities as the Charm users, Victini, and Claydol. But when it comes to Claydol and the Fairy types, you got Ice Punch. Ice Punch hurts them. Now you might not beat Gardevoir, right? But you will still hurt it, maybe get a shield from it, and you could bait it out to kind of protect your Malamar in the end game. So I think there could really be some big brain plays going on with the uh, with the Metacham there. I don't think it's the first Pokemon you should whip out in this cup, but once again, a little underestimated. Could be a lot better than what you think it is. Then we got Galarian Slowking. Galarian Slowking is a little bit more straightforward. It's got Hex, it's got Shadow Ball, it's a Psychic Cup. So why isn't it better than what it is? Uh, well, it's not a ghost type Pokemon. So the Hexes, Hex is already like a very okay attack. And without the same type of attack bonus, it really feels just okay, right? And then that makes it so it's kind of hard for it to close on stuff. You start to have a little bit of the Malamar factor going on where you got big charge move damage, but your fast move isn't all that impactful. I guess to paint the picture for you, this Pokemon is a poison type Pokemon, right? It's a psychic poison type. Against the Gardevoir, you're resisting the charm. If you just did pure fast moves, you're not reaching that third shadow wall anyways. So if you're strapped in against Gardevoir in the two shield situation and you just use fast moves, Gardevoir will still beat you because your hex damage is just so mediocre and the charmage is just so charming, right? And you also got big old clay doll to worry about too. So I think Galarian Slowking could work out really well. Like if you're able to fast move farm some weakened trapped Pokemon down, uh, then you could just start throwing Shadow Balls and constantly stay ahead of the game with the Shadow Ball spamage. That said, I think there's a lot of opportunities for Galarian Slowking to fall short just because of how awkwardly slow it can be. Then we got Cresselia here. Cresselia needs no introduction. It's a big thick tanky Pokemon. I think it's the tankiest Pokemon in the entire cup here and it does some pretty decent neutral damage with the Grass Knot and the Moon Blast. Big problem is is that Grass Knot and Moon Blast happens to be resisted by the Steel and Fire type Pokemon in the cup that are very very good in this cup. So it might be a little awkward for Cresselia. That said Cresselia is crazy crazy thick and charge moves still hurt even if they are a bit resisted sometimes. So I think Cresselia could erode opponents down much like it does in the Great League and the Ultra League through that you know pure sheer thickness going on there and could stand out in this cup. But it definitely isn't the first pick that comes to mind when it comes to the Psychic Cup meta. And then finally we have Celebi. Out of all the Pokemon I could have included in this graphic I chose Celebi. You wanna know why? Because I believe in Celebi more than I believe in Shadow Latios and the other goofy wacky picks that could happen in the Psychic Cup meta. And I think one thing that really stands out to me with Celebi is how underestimated it may be in the Psychic Cup. I mean, the Magical Leaf, fast move spamage, you know, neutral, solid damage against a lot of things in this cup. And then you got the big ol' Leaf Storm, which is a huge nuke that may be underestimated 
in this cup. I mean, it can one-shot a freaking Metagross for crying out loud. And with all the super powerful charge moves happening all over the place in the Psychic Cup meta, is somebody going to spare a shield for Celebi? Especially when they are supposed to be resisting that grass damage, that little baby grass damage. I don't know. I think it could stand out in a pretty interesting way. And if Claydol is popular, watch out Claydol. And if the water types and Raichu become popular, watch out fellas. Celebi is around. Um, but I probably wouldn't bring Celebi to the Psychic Cup unless you're like a real Celebi enthusiast or you're really interested in using Celebi in the Cup. It, it definitely does have its drawbacks. And that wraps it up for the Psychic Cup Meta Simplified. If you want some more information on the picks and the meta itself, link in the description to my article on GamePress. Uh, the article also has some sample teams for you to get your feet wet with in the Psychic Cup Meta. If you got any questions on this content, of course, comment below. Let me know what's up, and I'll be happy to help you out. And if you enjoyed this kind of content and you want to see more like it, well, make sure to subscribe to Swag Tips. Swag Tips. I'd also like to give a special shout-out to these Patreon supporters. If you want to support the Swagman on Patreon, link in the description. The time has come for Ryan Swag to go get a haircut. It's getting, it's getting kind of goofy long here. And with how, like, thin and balding my hair is, like, when it gets longer like this, it gets... It's kind of weird, you know? I need to get that appointment scheduled.